It'd be nice to get a warm welcome from Bev. But all she says when she sees me is... You're not going on tonight. I shake my head, bracing my elbows on the bar. It's what passes for packed at the hideout tonight. Buzzing with a crowd attracted by Bev's 50-cent beer night. The uptick in business is exactly by Bev's. Doesn't want corroded coffin in. Scaring off paying customers. But that's okay. That's not why I'm here. I'm not looking for a gig, I say. I'm looking for a girl. Maybe get a haircut, see if that helps. She was here last night. Dark hair, boots. Bev just looks at me. She was the only person in the entire bar who doesn't end every weeknight passed out on the floor. Come on, Bev. You remember her. Jeans? She finally asks after a long pause. Stupid earrings? I don't know about stupid. Way too much bullshit around her eyes? Uh, but Bev isn't looking at me. Her eyes are fixed at some point over my shoulder. Some point in the direction of the front door. I turn. I see her. She's standing just inside the door, taking in the Thursday night hideout crowd with a mix of glee and apprehension. I feel like any second she'll decide that this level of chaos isn't worth it and disappear into the night. And I'll never find her again. I'm already moving towards her. Still think a haircut's worth considering. Bev shouts after me, but I ignore it because Paige has spotted me, though the crush. And holy shit, her entire face lights up. There's a chance I'm gonna have a heart attack, but there's no time for that right now. I'm on a mission. I hoped I'd run into you, Paige says. Are you playing tonight? I shake my head. I'm actually only here because I was hoping to run into you. Oh yeah? Someone well past the point of buzzed lurches into my shoulder and I have to stagger to catch my balance and to avoid the shower of beer that follows in the guy's tipsy wake. Do you maybe want to head outside? Yeah. Paige agrees fervently, and then we're slipping out the door together, stepping into the blessedly cool, quite night. The hideout parking lot is more rugged gravel than immaculate asphalt, but at least it's calm. Our only company out here is a couple of low-talking, stubble-chinned guys, chain-smoking near the dumpsters. I can place them both. Everyone knows just about everyone in Hawkins, and these guys work with my uncle at the factory. They're so invested in their conversation that they barely look over as we crunch out into the moonlight, which means I'm free to fix my undivided attention, right where it belongs, on page. How's the decluttering going? I ask, pulling a pack of cigarettes out of my jacket and sliding one between my lips. A moment later, I'm blinking into the face of the universe's tiniest supernova because Paige has beaten me to it with her own Zippo, lighting my cigarette with a flick of her thumbnail. Horrifying. I offer my pack to her, and she takes one, lighting it for herself. Today was pizza boxes. She says on an exhale, and together we watch plumes of smoke escape up into the sky. She ordered Ike's slice like twice a week, and I don't think she ever threw a box out. No more cats? Not yet, but we've barely put a dent in the house. She shoots me a sideways look. I told my mom I'd be sticking around for a while longer to help out. What about work? Davey barely notices when I'm there. He definitely won't notice that I'm gone. Is this why you wanted to find me tonight? To talk about my dead grandma's boarding and make me feel weird about my job? No. Then why did you want to see me, Eddie? Why can't I just come out and say it? It should be easy. It was all I could think about on the drive over here, with Higgins's sneer still searing across my brain. But Paige is standing next to me and my tongue's turned into a lump of lead. Just dead weight sitting in my mouth. You asked if we were playing tonight? I forced the words out. Uh-huh. You like our music? You like Corroded Coffin? Yeah, you guys are great. So sign us. The flaring cherry at the end of Paige's cigarette abruptly dies. Excuse me? I circle around so we're standing face to face. We're good? Sign us? I g it's not that easy. Why not? Jesus, Eddie, are you serious? She's angry. I've already messed this up. I thought you wanted to. God, 
I'm an idiot. You're just looking for a way to Davy, just like everyone else. No, that's not, not what I'm saying. Not the only thing I'm saying. What are you saying? I'm saying you were looking for something real. I hold my hands out at my sides. Look at me, Paige. I'm not some mass-produced piece of SoCal plastic. I'm just a kid from Indiana. I don't have shit going for me. No money, no nothing. None of this is a fashion statement. My jeans are ripped, because they're ripped. I look like I have no money, because I have no money. I take a deep breath. It shudders in my chest. You said you'll know it when you find it. I'm saying you found it. And I'm saying cherry on top of all that, you like my music. Paige is watching me, arms wrapped around her stomach. And I might be going crazy, but I could almost believe some of that angry spark in her eyes is fading. It's a shitty move to ask a girl outside and just try to talk shop. You can't tell me people don't do that in L.A. She snorts. Then, tapping on of her incisors with a fingernail, she gives me a look that rakes from the tips of my worn-out sneakers to the top of my head. I feel her eyes as they travel leaving W glowing warmth in their wake. I found it, huh? Yeah. Small town garage band striking it big in the national music scene. Bareback turned frontman turned rock hero. Hero. That sounds way better than rotting apple. I'll take two. It's a good story. Think you can do anything with it? With me? Her gaze is back on me, lingering. I've got one or two ideas. She drops the butt of her cigarette into the gravel and grinds it out with a crunch. Okay. I can hardly believe my ears. Okay? Paige nods. I'll give you a shot. One shot. But here's how it's gonna work. I'm nodding like my head's loose. Whatever you want. Whatever you say. I'm going out on a limb here. I really need you to understand that. Davy's going to think I'm cutting some of my hometown friends a break when I bring you up. Which means we've got to prove to him wrong right out of the gate. Practice makes perfect. Copy that. Because we're in Hawkins and WR is, you know, not. You'll have to put together a demo for them. And I don't just mean setting up a tape recorder in your garage. I mean, you'll need a studio. A mix. Something legit. Something legit. I'm starting to see a shape in the last trails of my cigarette smoke. And it looks a lot like a dollar sign. Assuming that goes well, and Davy likes you, and I'm not making no promises, then you'll have to come out to Los Angeles to audition for him and the other executives. He wouldn't sign us off the demo? This isn't Battle of the Bands, Eddie. They want to know what they're investing in. Sure, sure. That misty dollar sign is getting a lot of friends. But I think I actually think you're right. Paige sounds almost surprised to be admitting this to herself. I think you and Corroded Coffin, you guys have got something that people will like. We might actually pull this off. She takes a deep breath. And I realize that this is almost as much of a plunge for her as it is for me. Let's make you guys famous. She sticks out a hand to shake. And I feel like an asshole because I'm stuck standing still. With studio fees and travel expenses dancing through my head. I don't have that money. I don't have anything close to that kind of money. And it doesn't matter how many shifts I pick up at the hideout. Bev is never going to be paying my way to California. But I know someone who could. I shake her hand. Rock hero, I say. It's got a ring to it. 